of their team. Uh, obviously, they would like to compete against the likes of San Miguel, Derby Ace, and of course, uh, the Token Tech Stop on Texas. That's why you can see all this movement is really trying to right. build up your team. Eh? Coca-Cola Tigers, on the other hand, trying to shake things up. They're starting off with Marvin Cruz and Gary David, as expected, but... We have the new import, John Williamson. Will Antonio, who is only about to play his third game this conference, didn't play the last time around. He's going to get the start. And uh, Dennis Espino will also start out at the other forward position. Well, you know, Will Antonio is a member of the assistant coach. They actually activated him uh, because he can play the two guards and the small forward. And they would like to use him probably defending against the import. That's going to be a re-jump here. Our referees here are actually three very good referees. No, Boy Cruz has come back. Uh, we have uh, Fronji Aldaba and we have Joel Ngo. Mm -hmm. no? So this must be a big game for the PBA to assign this kind of people. You know, The other guys are good, I think, would be Art Herrera and Noel uh, Kiligen, no? But these are three of the best uh, referees in this uh, league right now. Now, our first quarter is officially underway. Barangay Ginebra getting the first possession. Vita Lazatin here along with Dr. J. Andy Howe at fourth side. Helter Brand trying to work around the screen. Drop pass for Miller. No. Battle for the loose ball. Hatfield right in the heart of it. Yancy de Ocampo. The kick out pass. Helter Brand for three. No. Two in and out shots there for Barangay Ginebra from their uh, backcourt players. Espino strokes for the long one. Well, it could be a long night here for Barangay Nebra if Dennis hits those outside shots. Obviously, Dennis can also play the power forward position and can be a post player. No? Patfield out to Miller. Miller with a fake. There's the jumper. No. Two misses already from Willie Miller. He spent about 10 minutes. But well, look at this. Antonio. He's hurt. Oh, he's hurt. He, he stretched for that rebound. And I don't know if it was in the landing or when he jumped up, but he limped back to the bench. And we got a 30-second timeout brought to you by Handy Picks. And first aid by him all bonds all seals all. Well, that's the problem if you haven't really been playing competitively and you only play in practice, and then you're forced to go at full speed. You're really going to get hurt, just like what happened to Nate McMillan. <laughs> right. As a coach had to play with uh, his team, mm -hmm. <laughs> and you know, but. Will is uh, pretty young yet, no? so it's not that much of a no, ang problem. It's na stretch ka na, so they have to get a new guy to come in that's going to be Aliera. Now this is Will Antonio, right there in position. Didn't have any... Uh, no, when he yes, came it down. Was, yeah, it was when he came down. May have landed awkwardly on that uh, right foot. And so he's going to stay on the bench. Francis Aliera will get an early start here in this ball game. Coca-Cola protecting a two-point lead. Still a lot of time remaining in the first quarter. Aliera covered by Brown. They go low post now. Aliera the fake. Two seconds on the shot clock. Marvin Cruz lets it go. No. And Williamson actually tapped that. Now Miller. Running right into Aliera. And yeah. that's going to be a blocking foul. Correct. Obviously a good foul at this stage. Uh, you're not in foul trouble. The team is not in foul trouble. You don't want to give him ever an easy fast break where they could get two points. So maybe put a stop and let's go back to our half-court defense. Down to the low post. Yancy Del Campo facing up to Dennis Espino. Fadeaway jumper is short. Tiger is back on offense. Looking to build on this lead. Espino from the same spot. No. Brown with a rebound. Good boxing out done there by Hatfield against Williamson, keeping him off the boards. Then and Brown with a nice pass. Good block. And a foul called underneath. Looks like it's going to be on Espino. Well, look at that, what you uh, what you were saying. Uh, because uh, they really could not use Mamaril anymore. Uh, you have Deo Campo. You got Rico Villanueva. You hope and if Eric Meg is healthy, he's getting about 25 to 28 minutes a game. Then you got your import, who's also playing big. You got Hatfield playing the power forward position, who's also big. You got Willie Wilson playing that position. You want to give him some time. It was really difficult for them to continue to live with Mamaril just sitting on the bench. Right. <laughs> well, for those who are not aware, Billy Mamaril traded to the Air 21 Express in exchange 
for Mike Cortez, who has yet to make his debut. And likewise for Air 21, that is what they needed. They needed more of a guy that uh, their front court lineup, as uh, Lito Alvarez right. was saying. No? But of course, you have to give up a guy that's really good in, in Mike Cortez. That's going to be short. That's Willie Miller with a rebound. Elder Brand out of the screen, down low. Hatfield loses it. Marvin Cruz, nowhere to go. Hoping to find uh, Gary David there. Coca-Cola is another team that really needs a point guard because after Marvin Cruz, they're only using Paulo Mendoza, who's a makeshift uh, point guard. Chico Laneta has been injured, has not been able to come back to the... Uh, uh, Chris Ross. <laughs> David jumper in and out. Miller working around the screen, nice two-man game, finding Rudy Hatfield. Both teams really struggling to score, but at least you go into the basket, you get a layup. That's the easiest way to score. Hatfield gets his first two points of the game. Spino. Spino gives you a lot of dimensions. He's got a nice jump shot from 15, 16 feet, but he's also a good post player. If you're not going to double team him, he does use his body and his height against people that are not really big enough to defend him at the post or not quick enough. Dennis Espino, definitely a banger down low. He's got two free throws coming up. Over to Patricia Hizo now with his support. There are constants in Coach John Wichico's game plan, and that is to limit turnovers, take good shots, don't give up easy baskets, and don't give second chances, and obviously have good transition defense. But since Coke has a new import whom they haven't seen, it's important that they adjust quick. Now, their scout scouting rather on Williamson is that he's an inside player but has a decent shooting touch. He works hard, gets a lot of offensive rebounds. So Denim Brown told me he's got to be matched up against Williamson. Stevenson and he needs to keep him off the glass, may uh, prevent him from going left as he is a lefty, and keep him off from the post. Vito? Thanks, Patricia. Well, we have yet to see Williamson get some touches here. But again, Hinebra, this is their second opportunity off the offensive rebound. Helter Brand nails the three. And remember, he missed that one earlier from the same spot. He just remounts. So a little adjustment on his shot. Three point shot from the outside. Not going to work there for Williamson, but last touch on Willie Miller who couldn't control the ball. So a lucky break for the Coca-Cola Tigers here in the first quarter. Eight minutes and 18 still remaining. And Barangay Hinebra ahead only by three. <laughs> Gary David will try to set this one up for Coca-Cola. And there's a takeaway by Helterbrand. And with Helterbrand... No defense inside, that's an easy two. Five straight points here for J.J. Helterbrand. Obviously another thing that can spike up the game of J.J. Helterbrand is to have that healthy competition within. Now he knows Mike Cortez is there if he's not going to play well. That's right. So he's going to play well. That's nice, <laughs> that's nice insurance for J.J. Helterbrand. Aliera in the paint. Jumper is no good. Brown with another rebound. Denim Brown, a guy who averages 15 rebounds per ball game. He takes the three. That's offline. Aliera loses it. Off the loose ball, Denim Brown. Almost lost his dribble there. A little too much for J.J. Helterbrand on that three. Nice up and down action we're seeing so far. And the alley will play. Finished off by John Williamson. Welcome to the PBA. They better tuck in his shirt. <laughs> not referees are going to remind him about that. <laughs> that was a good alley will play. Not high enough for a dunk, but enough to get the basket. Willie Miller. Nice little stop and pop for the thriller. Willie Miller, his first two points of the ball game. Lead is back up to five. Slowly but surely, never is beginning to get the feel. They're getting the good shots because they've also been defending pretty well on the other end. So far, they have controlled Gary the bit here in this ball game. Speaking of which, and look, how, look at how Hartfield uh, boxes out against that guy Williamson. Willie oh. Miller. Instant offense by Willie Miller. A guy who can hit it from anywhere on the hardwood. 
And that last three extends the Barangay Hinebro lead to 8, 14 to 6. And another look. First at the alley play from Marvin.